and to say, well, I just want to know this, and I want to know it, I want to know this, and I want to know that. But the Bible teaches you, you need to know them that labor among you. And when you're going out and you're eating off all these other different tables and stuff, you know nothing about these people. You don't know where they come from. You know nothing about their character, their nature, what they stand from. You haven't seen them have any power of God manifested whatsoever at all in their life. They've never had any Holy Spirit manifestation, nothing at all. So you need to be very careful about what you embrace to be the truth. Amen. Amen. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Now Hebrews 5.12, all right? For when, for the time you ought to be teachers. So there are people who believe themselves to be teachers, ministers, pastors, so-called prophets. Look at the admonition again. You have need that one teach you again. You hear that? That's right. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Now, some people have never been taught the principles and oracles of God. You understand that? There are so many people opposed to God's calendar. There are so many people opposed to God's holiness and his way of righteousness, his time frame and stuff, and they've never taught it. But yet they will oppose the ones that do teach it. So these are the people that they actually um, need to be quiet, sit down, shut up, so you can learn. Let somebody else teach you who has understanding. Amen. The first principles and the first oracles of God. And I'll become such as have need of milk. See, these are people that actually believe themselves to be teachers, but they really truthfully are not where they think they are. Right. They are what the scriptures call people who are vainly puffed up. And they've been drawn away by their vain imaginations. Are you, are you understanding? And so, these are the people that have need of milk and not of strong meat. You have to first start on the milk first. You follow me? Now, that, that is appalling when you have people out here who believe that they're teaching you meat. And they yet don't even have it to offer. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful, unskillful. You hear that? I mean, it's just like a swordsman. You know, it, this thing has to be wielded very carefully. Amen. That's right. Huh? In the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Notice, this is all pertaining to the word of righteousness. Not the, the word that a lot of people preach and teach today, which is the word of, uh, let, let we do this, we do that, so let me judge everybody else for what you ain't doing. That's what people call righteousness today. That's what they equate to righteousness. I mean, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, right? I don't know when that changed, but apparently people do it all the time now. So rather than judging righteous judgment, we, we go around with a critical eye. And we're very unskillful in the way that we're presenting ourselves. Amen? You know, it takes wise wisdom to build a house. Hallelujah. But strong meat belongs to them that are full age. You hear that? Even those who by reason of use they have exercised their senses to discern both good and evil. Now, the feast days are a shadow of the very image of Christ. Amen. And we've talked about the spring feast. Um, but we know that there are three major feasts. Is that right? Three major feasts, yet seven. All right? We know it's the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Is that right? Now, the other four feasts, and we'll put them in conjunction or in unity, is the uh, Pentecost, Unleavened Bread, the Feast of First Fruits, the Feast of Weeks, um, the Day of Atonement, or let me go to first of all trumpets, then Day of Atonement, and then tabernacles. All right? So we're going to revisit some of the scriptures, and we're going to do some reading here for understanding purposes. So when I start expounding, we already have a basis to know where I'm coming from so that nobody gets lost. Amen? Leviticus 23 outlines the, uh, the feast days, the feast of the Lord. Okay? So what we're going to do as we have done in the first feast or the spring feast, we're going to define whose feast these are. 
Leviticus 23 verse 1, and the Lord, that means Yahweh, spake unto Mose, or Moses, or Moshe, saying, speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord. Who feast are they? Concerning the feast of the Lord, which he shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feast. They belong to God. Did y'all hear that? Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, a holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all of your dwellings. These are the feast of the Lord. Did y'all hear that? Even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. When are you supposed to proclaim these things? In their seasons. See, right now we're doing a teaching. So we're not doing a proclamation. We're doing a teaching. And there's a difference. All right? So when we get into the season, we'll have a better understanding of why we're there. Amen? Hallelujah. And that's when we'll do the proclamation of it. And you'll see the difference in the dynamic of teaching and proclaiming. All right? Now, there's a very confusing point, even during this time, uh, which the law and the prophets don't even speak about. And we're talking about the Feast of, of Tabernacles, which is the, the, the final of the three feasts, which happens in the fall. Are you following me? Um, the Jewish people or the people, who, uh, they, they actually call this the beginning of the new year. They call it Rosh Hashanah. Now, there is no scriptural evidence for that whatsoever at all. You can't find it anywhere. It's just like the, it's just like the Christians today. They, they make up Christmas and Easter, and you can't find no scripture for it anywhere. They make up Sunday, you know what I mean? So people, they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. You understand what I mean? And so they, they make up things, and they, and they tell people things, and they teach things which they ought not to teach, but they're going to do it anyway. Are you following me? So, but they call it Rosh Hashanah, so you just, but you just throw it out of your vocabulary because it's not biblical at all whatsoever, amen? Now, no matter what the Messianic Jews tell you, the Orthodox Jews, or I don't care who it is and stuff, uh, the beginning of the new year is the time of what the scriptures call Pesca or Abib Nisan, uh, the 14th day of the first month, amen, which is during the Passover season. Now, we're going to go to Leviticus 23, 33. We're going to read a little bit here. The Lord and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. And on the first day uh, shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no several work therein. Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And on the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you. And you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly. Did y'all hear that? It's a day that is required for assembly. And you shall do no several work therein. These are the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice and a drink offering, everything upon this day. Besides the Sabbaths of the Lord, and besides your gifts, and besides all your vows, and besides all your free will offerings, which you give unto the Lord. Also, in the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. Now, no, notice, we got different time frames popping up right here, which we're going to deal with each one of them, okay? Seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. So, you see, you have to, under, you have, to have understanding to know in the New Covenant when it's pertaining to the seven-day weekly Sabbath, and when it's talking about the Sabbaths as pertaining to God's feast days or time frame and calendar. You have to put them in the proper order in order to have good understanding. Just because you see the word Sabbath all the time does not mean it's talking about the seven-day Sabbath. Amen? Hallelujah. And ye shall take uh, you on the first day, the bros of goodly trees, branches and palm trees, and the bros of the thick trees, and the widows, and the brooks, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. There is a time of rejoicing, which when we get into this, you know, it's, it's going to cause, a, a, again, a, a nice arousing, arousing in the spirit because of understanding sake. You know what I mean? You're going to find out, wow, look at look how God and how beautiful he is. And I'm glad that he, he let me in on what he's doing. 